Hey everyone, in this video I will talk to you about a new capability that UiPath Studio 20.10 brings to the table. It is called Object Repository. But before jumping into the actual demo of this feature, uh, let me talk to you about the problem that we're solving. Now, if you've done UI automation in the past, you know that um, what you need to do is things like attaching to windows or opening, uh, opening applications, and then doing things like clicking, typing, and so forth. Now, one problem with this way of uh, doing UI automation is the fact that the selectors, so the way we identify which elements to click, are actually part of your automation and they cannot be reused. They cannot be reused across activities. So if I want to click this button multiple times, I have to um, specify the selector multiple times, right? If I have the same click in multiple files in my, uh, in, in my project, the uh, same thing, I have to specify the selector multiple times. So there is no reuse of these selectors. Similarly, you know, there, there might be another automation that might want to interact with the same um, menu item. And in that other automation, it will be yet another selector. Um, now, why this is problematic? Uh, because first of all, you know, some selectors are better than others. Some selectors are more generic, they're more resilient, and you want your selectors to be resilient. And also if these applications uh, get updated to newer versions, their selectors might change. And if you have a lot of, uh, you know, let's say click activities across multiple automations, you have to go through all of them and update all of them. Instead, you know, what if you had a, a library of selectors where you just make an update once and then you can update all the dependent um, processes. So I will go ahead and delete uh, um, what I have here. And also let me get rid of uh, showing uh, the classic selectors. Now, uh, what I will show you, Object Repository is a feature that to enable, you need to go into project settings and you need to enable modern design experience, okay? And then you'll have a new set of UI automation activities as well as the Object Repository panel. It will, it will show up. Okay, um, so you can see here, I have selected the Object Repository panel and I have a new functionality here called Capture Elements. And it's actually in the, in the Object Repository, this is where you will see all your uh, UI elements being captured. So I will use a recorder. Now the, the process that I will automate is going to be pretty simple. I go here under, under Notepad, click Format, Font, and then change the font size. Okay, and then click OK. Very pretty straightforward. So let's see how we can capture this uh, uh, UI element. So I'll click on Record UI elements. And you see this capture screen. I say, yep, I want to I wanna start recording. First, I will indicate uh, the window that I want to uh, capture elements from. In my case, is the notepad window. And then I start indicating the actual elements. So I want the format menu item. Um, I want, um, uh, let me confirm that. I want the actual text field. Maybe we want to type something in here. OK, I'll confirm that as well. Uh, and I want under format, there's a menu item called font. So I'll hit F2. F2 allows me to actually interact with the application. I click format. There's a timer in the upper left corner, as you can see. And then I want to click on font. Okay. And I'm fine with that as well. Okay. And now um, I have here the untitled um, notepad applications with uh, format, uh, the editable text, um, which is the, the canvas, and then the font uh, menu item. Okay, and let's see. Obviously, I can add, you know, all of this, uh, all of these menu items, if I want to. And let's say that um, let's say that uh, this is enough, and I will save my object, the object that I have um, captured here, to my UI library. Okay, so here I can see that I have the Notepad app. I have the Notepad, the main screen. Um, Notepad, and then I have the UI elements that I was uh, that I was playing with. But actually, what I want to do is also go here in this window, the font window, and capture some of these elements as well. So let me start another recording session, uh, capturing session. Sorry. And um, now, similarly, I would say I want this window, um, and then I want uh, what do I want? I want the font. Um, and you can see that automatically we've detected what we call an anchor. And an anchor is like a label for, a, for an element, okay? And it is used to uh, help us better and identify these elements at, at runtime. So 
I have the font, I have the font style, uh, I have the font size, okay, the script, uh, the OK button, and the cancel button, okay? And you can see all of them being captured here. And I can see the ampersand, so these are uh, the, because of the else um, shortcuts. So I'll just delete this, make this more human readable. Uh, this is the size, this is the script, and you can see here the selectors as well, right? I'm not gonna get into those, those details. And we're fine, okay? Now I'm gonna save all of this to my object uh, library, okay? And let me close this up. So now what I can see is that it actually thought that this is part of another application, but it's not part of another application. It's part of the same um, Notepad app. So I will just drag and drop the font screen over the Notepad app, okay? And now under Notepad, I have both of these, and I can right click and delete that font app that it wrongly created for me, okay? Uh, the other thing that I see here is that the unchecked is, uh, this was my OK button. So I will edit this element and actually call it OK. And I can even change its type to say it's a, it's a button, OK? Um, and uh, same for cancel. Let me edit this element and say it's a button. This is just for me to, for easier, you know, it, it's an easier way to identify which is which. Is which. So now let's start building our automation. So first thing, uh, what I want to do is open the Notepad app in this screen. Okay, so I will just, I, I can take it from the object repository. I can take this UI element and just drag them into my, uh, into my uh, canvas. And now you can see up here, uh, you have uh, your, our command palette that opens and it tells me, what do you want to do with this? You want to open this uh, specific application? You want to use this application? I say, yep, that's what I want to do, okay? So now it says, okay, it's going to use the application uh, notepad. And with this application, I want to click format. So I'll just drag that over here. As you can see, it suggests the fact that, hey, probably what you want to do is click this thing. Yep. Okay. So you can see the name of the activity also is now click format. Very friendly. And then I want to click, um, click on font. So format, font. Nice. So now uh, what we will have is we will have the font window that will open up with the font window, um, format, font. Let's say I wanna change uh, the size. Uh, say size is 20 now, uh, it's pretty big 20. Um, let's make it, let's make it bigger actually. Let's make it 36, okay. Uh, so you come here, I say, I'm gonna click on font. Uh, and then I want to change the size. So I will drag the size UI element under the plus button. And again, here I can click it, but I can also type something. So I'll choose to type into. What do you want to type? I want to type, I think, I think 40, pretty big, uh, pretty big size. And then I want to click the OK button. So again, I will drag do a key button here and say, yep, I, I wanna click it. And then maybe let's type something uh, into our uh, editable text. Okay, so once we're done, we're gonna type, what are we typing? We're gonna type, hello world. Okay, there we go. So now I will just save this automation. Let me close my notepad here, okay. So I save my automation and now you can see my automation here, all the steps, um, and I will just run it, see what happens. So we will see open, open um, okay, there we go. Hello world, that's done. <laughs> it was pretty fast. So what happened is that uh, notepad was opened and then the format uh, window um, opened, the font window opened, uh, the size was changed and then we wrote hello world. So let's run this again, really fast, but instead of 40, Let's make a smaller font size, let's say 10 this time. Okay, save it and run this. And now open font 10, okay, and hello world, there we go. So this is a pretty simple uh, workflow where, where I actually showed you how to use um, object repository, which is again, a new functionality that we've just added to uh, UiPath Studio in the latest version. And now if, 
if you want to use these descriptors across multiple files or multiple multiple automations, you obviously can do that. So if here I had another uh, sequence, um, and then I want to open another uh, Notepad window, you will see that the the actual selector is being reused. And there's this little icon here that tells me that it is used uh, by um, you know it, it is linked to an object in our object repository. So if I come here, for example, under fonts, and if I click this icon, you will see that the font UI descriptor has been uh, uh, has been selected, the object itself. And uh, if I right click here, obviously I can edit the element, I can edit the descriptor, um, so I can choose uh, what I want to do with it. Nice. So once we're done, the next thing that you want to do, if let's say you want to reuse this set of selectors, you want to reuse them across multiple uh, multiple automations. So what you want to do then is you can come here. Uh, this is the project uh, where I've created this uh, this this uh, UI descriptors, this you know object. I can right click on it, and um, what I can have here is let's see where is it. Uh, oh, there you go. It's this, this little button here, which says extract as UI library project. So what this means when I click this, I can give it a name, uh, notepad, let's say notepad descriptors. Okay, I can give it a name um, and uh, it will actually create a new UI library project. Okay, let's create it. And that's like a, um, like a package, okay. Uh, that has its own dependencies. So now uh, the project was created. It asked me, do you want to open it? Yes, I want to open it. So this will close my existing project and open uh, the other project. And I'll show you in a second what that means. And in this project, you can see there's no, you know, there's no files here. I, um, I have no, you know, actual XAML files. All I have is my UI descriptors. And this, when I publish it, so now I have my descriptors. If I come home, uh, you see here, this is a library item um, and it says notepad descriptors. And now if I come here, you know, I can make changes obviously, and then I can publish it. And if I publish it, I can publish it to, let's say my orchestrator tenant library feed. Okay. And this is going to be called notepad descriptors. So I choose to publish it. And this is a package like any other package that you would publish like uh, any other, uh, yeah, and now if we go back and open our, our automation notepad, we still have our uh, descriptors part of this, this automation, okay? So what I will do now is actually I will come here under UI libraries and uh, under, sorry, under manage packages. And if I look on my orchestrator tenant, I should have a package called notepad, notepad descriptors, okay? So I add it as a dependency, as a dependency to my project. You can now see all the dependencies, including the library of descriptors. So I save it. And now you see here on the right side, you see that I have a dependency for UI library, the notepad descriptors, we have our application, we have the same structure, but we also have them on my project, you know, under project UI descriptor. So I will come here and I will just delete this one. Okay, and I will just leave the um, external dependency to this to these descriptors. So now, if I open my main file, you will still see that my uh, my um, project here, my um, you know all the activities are now linked to the uh, descriptors in my library. Okay, so now you know you can imagine somebody else being in charge of. Uh, of maintaining all the descriptors for a notepad. Obviously this could be, you know, Salesforce, SAP, uh, you name it, other, other applications. So somebody would be responsible for managing all, this, uh, all these descriptors. And then I could just use these descriptors. So I come here under manage packages. I add all the applications that I, all the descriptors of all the applications that I want to use. And then this will be added here on the right side nicely. And then I just drag and drop them uh, to, to reuse them. And you know you don't have to drag and drop. You know, there's uh, you can still do the uh, more of the um, classical. You know, you add the activity, and then you can indicate on the screen or drag an element from uh, from uh, the from the repository. Yeah. 
So in a nutshell, this is um, this is uh, object repository, a new functionality that we've just released. The goal being to reuse selectors, to reuse uh, what we call object descriptors um, across uh, your project, across multiple projects, and within your team. Thanks a lot for uh, for watching, and uh, until next time, goodbye.